While Michigan is starting to see its COVID-19 case numbers come down, there is one group in the state that's still experiencing high numbers, prisons. The Michigan Department of Corrections reached a grim milestone this week, surpassing 100 COVID-19 prisoner deaths. As of Wednesday, 103 people incarcerated at the state's 29 prisons have died since the pandemic began. Last week, the Michigan Department of Corrections reported 3,000 new COVID-19 cases among prisoners. So tonight, 7 investigator Ross Jones looks into why the outbreaks keep happening. He said he hurts. He's tired. Um, he can't eat. He don't. He can't taste anything, and he can't smell. Last month, Doreen LaPerriere got the call she was dreading. Her son, Eric, had contracted COVID-19. They don't seem to care, you know, it's just, they're just a prisoner there. Sentenced last January for possession of under 25 grams of cocaine, Eric has been incarcerated for nearly a year. He's now one of the nearly 700 active COVID-19 cases at the Gus Harrison Correctional Facility in Adrian, where six inmates have died since the start of the pandemic. The idea of him being in there with the COVID really upsets me. I'm sorry. Close quarters and an already high prison population made the state's prison system a tinderbox for the virus. As of Thursday, 104 patients have died from COVID-19, and the MDOC estimates that 20,000, nearly half the state's inmates, have tested positive since March. There were nearly 7,000 active cases yesterday, according to MDOC spokesperson Chris Gouts. Right now, um, all of our facilities have at least one a positive case within the last 14 days. It's very difficult to socially distance, especially when you have to have a correctional officer escort you if you're an incarcerated person everywhere you go. The limited social distancing and old buildings with poor ventilation means COVID spread like a brush fire. MDOC estimates that 20% of its staff have tested positive since March. Three employees have died. Everyone is affected, according to Wandra Bertram of the Prison Policy Initiative. If you know someone who lives near a jail or near a prison, you know, or if you know someone with a loved one in prison, all of those people are more, you know, are, are put at greater risk of contracting this virus. The state has implemented changes since the start of the pandemic, like weekly testing at all prisons with at least one positive case. But still, cases rise. You know, all the best laid plans, all the best policies and procedures and isolating and cohorting prisoners by their COVID status. You can have all those things in place, but then we also have to rely on uh, labs to get us results back. It's a lag in testing, but it also comes down to people. We have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. Attorneys and advocates like Bertram are pushing the state to send home as many people as possible. So far, the MDOC has released over 5,000 inmates who were parole eligible. Today, the state's prison population is the lowest that it's been in 30 years, but questions remain. There are only so many prisoners that we have any control over to, to release. Gout says the state's parole board has considered every parole eligible inmate and any further releases will require action taken by the state's legislature. The lawmakers uh, or our advocates, if they're saying that we need to release more people, um, they should be talking to lawmakers to change the laws um, that would enable us to do that. He says that of the 104 prisoners who have died from COVID, at least half were serving life sentences. In other words, they never would have been eligible for release under today's laws. But so far, 25% of parole eligible inmates have been denied for an early release, even nonviolent offenders like Doreen's son, Eric. The 43-year-old was eligible for parole in September. Three months later, he's still in prison for drug possession and now has COVID-19. I miss him. You know, he's not a bad person. He's a good person. You know, it's just that, um, yeah, it's been rough. While cases remain high, the MDOC says that numbers are starting to fall. Well, at the start of the week, there were more than 9,000 active cases of COVID-19. As of yesterday, those numbers fell to under 7,000. We're in Detroit tonight. I'm Ross Jones, 7 Action News.